Welcome to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Joyous conversations about what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about our one reality. You have nothing to fear. You are eternal and you are perfectly loved. Knowing the truth changes everything. Now, here's Roberta. Welcome to Seek Reality. I'm Roberta Grimes and I'm so happy you're with us today. You know, there are some people who are so far ahead of me in doing their aspects of this work that I am simply in awe of them. <laughs> what what can I say? You can eat. <sighs> how can I even describe to you how it feels to know them, to be their friend? I'm still a learner, my dear ones, just as you are. I'm just uh, maybe a little bit ahead of you in this process. A while back, I got an email from someone who was being harassed by a former spouse, and it was it was alarming to me. I felt I had to do something right away, so I sent today's guest an email. Not to ask whether he could help. I was sure he couldn't directly help, but because he's my friend and he's in the helping field and I didn't know what else to do, maybe I thought maybe he knows the kind of counselor. I didn't even know what to do at all. I thought he might know someone who could help her. But then a minute later, when I checked my email again, he had copied me on an email to her where he himself was offering to help her. This is the kind of person he is. If there's a fire anywhere nearby at all, he picks up a bucket. So I sent him an email. I said, basically, I said, what? And he he emailed me right back. He was telling me about the kinds of attaching entities. He was pretty sure we were entrapping the husband and the wife and making that sick relationship continue for both of them. Oh, my God, how amazing. Now, if you've been listening to Seek Reality for a while, you might already realize that our wonderful guest today is Peter Wright who is with us for the 11th time. Peter is a hypnotherapist who's based in Santa Barbara, California. He's very good, very good at what he does. When I first met him, maybe 10 years ago now, I was certain I could not be hypnotized. Forget it. I can't, cannot be hypnotized. Now, you may feel the same way. Maybe you think you can't be hypnotized either. And frankly, I wouldn't be so sure if I were you. It turns out that I can be hypnotized just fine. Thank you very much. Our topic today is past life regression therapy. Peter is one of 40 certified past life regression therapists in the United States. And I wish I could try past life regression therapy. But unfortunately, my sometimes annoyingly bossy primary spirit guide won't allow me to be regressed to any of the 17 past lives he and I have shared till after I have graduated. However, past life regression therapy can be sometimes be extremely helpful to people who have less bossy primary spirit guides, as likely would be the case with people like the woman who, e woman who emailed me. And then our wonderful, wonderful friend, Peter Wright, would be just the sort of person to help in such situations. Peter, welcome. I'm so happy to have you back with us today. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be back with you and your audience. Before we go on to explore the wonders of past life regression therapy, will you please just very briefly remind people how you got into this work, because I've just been listening, to, of course, to our recent past episodes. And, and I know this life for you started, I think, from weren't you reading the back of a cereal box or something? Good. Thank you for asking. Um, when I was a kid, I have an older brother who's three years older, and he had a comic book collection. And I may be eight years old. And there was a Superman comic book that attracted my attention. And back in those days, there were ads in the last few pages of comic books. And in this particular one, there was an ad for a book called How to Hypnotize Your Friends. I thought, whoa, how cool. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I went up to my father and I showed him the ad and I said, Dad, I really want to buy this book, but I don't have any money. Can you help me? And my father looked at the ad and looked at his loving son and said, that's the stupidest idea I've ever heard. <laughs> so it killed it for 15 <laughs> years. So I got my master's in international relations, which means I can relate internationally, came back to Washington, D.C. and began taking classes in hypnosis and eventually got certified as a hypnotherapist and 
have been doing this work for 25 years. And along the way, got uh, certified in past life regression. And then after that, board certified in past life regression, being one of about 40 in the nation with that role. So I am very enthused about how you can use past lives and hypnosis to resolve issues in your life today. I, I just think it's, I still think it's kind of amazing. I'm a skeptic by nature. And I, but I, you know, yes, you can be a skeptic, but you know, you can't be such a skeptic that you deny reality. And this is reality. Past life regression is real. I actually have, even though I've not been allowed to do it with you, I have had it happen to me. I've talked with it about it before on Seek Reality. If we have time, I'll talk about it again today. But Peter, talk, just simply talk. Tell us the wonders that you do for other people because they are wonders indeed. Well, let me start by talking about hypnosis because there are so many myths about it and that can serve as a good um, entry point for us because okay. for me, hypnosis is just a simply focus concentration where you're fully aware of everything's going on around you. You're the traffic outside, but hopefully you're sharing with me what's going on inside of you. If you've ever cried watching a sad film, you've been in trance. Both <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> uh, same thing with reading a good book, watching television, daydreaming. We go in and out of trance every day. It's easy to get there. And when you're there, you're in a relaxed place. It's very easy to connect um, using hypnosis with your own higher self. That part of you that knows everything there is to know about you. So right up front, that's what we do. I take you into trance, up into the light, to a high vibration in the fifth dimension where all possibilities exist for you. And in that very expansive place, we meet with your heart, your higher self, and ask them to serve as our beginnings of an inner wisdom team to help resolve the issues that we're seeking to resolve during the session. And these issues can involve everything from um, anxiety, fear, depression, uh, health issues, um, resentment, grief, whatever. So we use that as a jumping off point for our session. Okay. <laughs> so it's normal. What you're saying is, hey, we're not doing anything fancy here, folks. This is something normal that, that we all naturally have happened to us. Exactly. Okay. Okay, go, go to it. All right. So um, we then um, invite you to, to go into whatever the story might be. So I'm asking your higher self, um, is the cause or source of the particular issue we're seeking to resolve from this life or a past life? Um, now your higher self knows everything there is to know about you from all your lifetimes. And so in the trans state, it's as if you're channeling your higher self. Uh, with words like, I'm here. So we talk with the higher self. And um, I have several uh, examples here of, of clients that um, can give you a sense of, of how this all um, unfolds. Um, so one client, for example, had a chronic pain in her neck. And so took her into relaxative trance, up into the light, connected with her higher self. And I asked his higher self, is the pain that um, Alice has been feeling in her, in her neck caused by something that happened in this life or a past life, if we're told past life. And would you take us back there now? Yes. So I asked um, Alice to follow her higher self back into that particular lifetime and to, as I counted from five down to one, find herself there at five, four, three, two, one. Um, plant yourself firmly down in the memory of your body as it was then, and plant your feet firmly into that body. Look down now and clearly see or sense or feel your feet. What are you wearing on your feet? And so she described to me that she was wearing boots with a medium-sized hands, short hair, heavy clothes. She's outside. Some people were nearby, crouching, mud, jungle. It's dark. And she realized that in this lifetime in this story, she was a soldier during World War II. So from the notes of my session, which I brought along today, um, here's what she reported. 
I'm on patrol. I'm scared. I hear a noise. We've been ambushed. We escape and run to safety. We're back on patrol. Someone is here. Where are they? I hear a shot. Get down. I've been hit on the back of the head, just below the helmet. What happens next? I'm being lifted up and put on a stretcher. What happens then? My men are running as they are carrying me. I'm on a helicopter now. I hear loud noises. I'm fading in and out. It's over. I'm dead. The medics yeah. tried, but I died. So what we're doing here is we're going into the story, your story. We're looking for the defeats. Where do things go wrong for you in that lifetime? Because out of the defeats could come the unfinished business, the karma, if you will, that's affecting you in your present lifetime. We go to the day of your death. How did you die? What was your dying thought? And because a dying thought can have a major impact on an upcoming lifetime. So if you die of starvation, there's never enough food. Oh, dear. <laughs> Plenty of food. <laughs> right. Uh, the feeling could be there's never enough. Um, so it's an issue for you in your left and in, in your present lifetime. So oh, okay. Okay, so then I invite you to move out of your physical body into your spirit body. I'll just imagine yourself um, in your spirit body now. And from there, I encourage you to go into the bardo. Um, it's a, a term from Tibetan Buddhism, an in-between place between lifetimes. You go there in your imagination. So once you're in the bardo, as the, in this case, the um, soldier, I invite you to, um, in your imagination, invite anyone from that life we just explored with whom you have unfinished business to come and join us in your imagination. And who shows up first? Well, in the case of the soldier who died during World War II, it was his mom showed up um, from that lifetime. So if your heart could speak to your mom, what would you say to her? And this is what my client said as, as a soldier. I'm so sorry that I died and left you, mom. I hope you found happiness. I love you. How does your mom respond? She hugs me and says, it's okay. She's proud of me. She tells me she found happiness after I died. How, does the, how do you respond as a soldier? I'm so relieved. So at that point, the soldier realized that he was so caught up in the war that it was time to stop blaming himself what, for what happened on that black battlefield and instead forgive himself. So that's what he did. I asked the soldier to look into his own eyes and forgive himself. And that's what he, he in fact did. And so in the follow-up session a week later, we get, we get together to talk about what happened during the session to uh, discuss not only what occurred, but also what shifted and changed. The client reported that um, she no longer had a nagging pain in her neck. In fact, it was wow. completely healed. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Just but shows Peter, there is so much in that. Let's unpack some of it so people listening can make sense of it. The first thing people are wondering about is, huh? So this, this attractive woman in your office was a man in a previous lifetime. People we right. do, we, we, we know we switch genders fairly frequently mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. between lives. It, it appears that we, we tend to choose a gender and, and stick with it a lot. But we also do switch genders fairly often. What seems to be the case is that we prefer a gender, but we also go back and forth. And my own theory, I don't know what your theory is, and I'd love to hear what you think. Um, my own theory is that that's one reason why there's some gender confusion in childhood, because if we were the previous uh, or, or a different gender 
uh, in our in previous lifetimes, we can be somewhat confused to find that we're a different gender in this one because we remember having been the other one and now we're this one and what's going on. And, and um, puberty seems to straighten it out. I'm an example of that. I'm usually male. And I was confused until I uh, went through puberty. And then I've never been confused since. I don't know if you've had other examples of that in your office. I have, I have not, per se. I just find it as part of the, the soul's growth, if you will. Um, from what I uh, have learned in my own practice is that Earth is a free will zone. And yep. one of the few places in the cosmos that is free will. Really? Really? And that's how our souls evolve through yeah. choices. Yep. Um, and so one of the choices can be, um, so through the choices that we make, um, we uh, create consequences. <laughs> so um, it's how we, um, we, 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 we run our lives. And through the consequences of our choices, um, our souls evolve. Um, right. So sure eventually, hopefully, to uh, choose love rather than fear. Right. And to right. be, right. As, as you well know from, from your, um, your own experience and all the guests that you've been talking about. So I see it all as free choice for us. Yep, absolutely right. And and so in, in addition, the, the the things that happen to us as you, we we seem to build up confusion about we seem to blame ourselves for things that we have no control over, such as this poor soldiers having having been killed. Um, he carried this response of the sense of responsibility to his mother. There was nothing mm-hmm. he could do about it. And apparently that became something he blamed himself for even after his death. Is that, is that what the sense that you had? Exactly. Exactly. Oh my. And, and yet often um, with the, I have another um, example of this type of thing that uh has an impact on someone in the client's present lifetime um, that would give you an even better understanding of how we're all interrelated here with with this type of work. Because I I find that um, we're we're here to make these choices. In fact, the purpose of reincarnation is to exercise free will. So you can have all sorts of of choices that you make for your souls to evolve. Yes, yes. Mm Mm-hmm. And so oh, let's, let's have an, another one. This is like candy. I can't wait to see what else you have to show us. <laughs> okay, excellent. Um, so I have here a client with, um, let's go through to get the most appropriate one here. Um, yes, um, I had a client who had a difficult relationship with her mother. Um, her mother's narcissistic and the client felt mom was never there for her. And as a result, she felt she had long-standing painful stomach issues because of mom, just not being able to get along with mom. So I took the client in hypnosis, connected with her higher self, and higher self said it was from a past life experience. So we went back into that lifetime, and my client found herself to be a a female, wearing a brown skirt and a smock, about 30 years of age. We learned she was a servant um, in this particular household, and she'd been attending a local fair with her nine-year-old daughter, the day off, off to the fair, and something happened. The two of them got separated, and the child was kidnapped. Oh, my. Nobody knew what had happened to the child. And so for my notes from this session, we therefore move to the most significant event next in that lifetime. And she said, I feel huge guilt. I've not allowed myself to be happy. I blame myself for my daughter's disappearance. And we learned that in that lifetime, she, her life basically ended as far as she was concerned in terms of happiness when her daughter was kidnapped. So we moved to the day of her death. What was your dying thought? I want to meet my daughter. Oh. So, out of physical body into spirit body, 
moving into the bardo, that in-between place between lifetime. And we invited her kidnapped daughter to join us because everybody's available to us in, this, in the uh, spirit realm. Everybody. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Whether they're currently alive in physical body or they've passed on or their past life personalities or their ascended masters, archangels, spirit guides from the uh, non-physical realm. Everybody's available to us through your imagination. Your soul speaks through your imagination. So we invite them to join us. Well, in this case, the daughter joined us in the bardo. And what we discovered was, is my client was talking to the daughter in her imagination. The daughter said she was very angry at her mom for not watching over her closely enough on the day that she was kidnapped. So I asked mom, how do you respond? And mom said, mom told her daughter, that she was truly sorry about what had happened. And she went on to say to her daughter that she'd suffered herself for the rest of her life because she died alone, racked with guilt. So I asked the kidnapped daughter, how to respond? Do you respond with what mom just told you? And the daughter was very emotional and said, I forgive you, mom. And so on achieving that, I asked, my client to look deeply into the eyes of her daughter. Does she remind you of anyone in your present lifetime? And to my surprise, the client said she realized that her kidnapped, kidnapped daughter was her mother in her present lifetime. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we invited her mom to join us again in her imagination. So we have the uh, past life daughter, mom, the uh, mother of the past life daughter and my client, all four of them together. And um, so mom, present day mom said, I'm here. And my client told her mom, no, and, um, and mom told us that she still remembered that lifetime and was very angry at my client for having been kidnapped in that past life. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my, what a soap opera this is. And so by going into that past life story, we created an opening for forgiveness on both sides. And in fact, they all four forgave each other during that session back and forth. So in my follow-up session a week later, I learned that my client had actually been to see her mother and was so surprised and pleased to realize that the relationship with her mother had greatly improved since the visit, since our session. In other words, mom knew nothing about that past life, but the relationship had changed and shifted for the, for the two of them. Wait a minute, did mother know about all of this? No. Not on a conscious know. level. Not on the conscious level. Oh my goodness. Oh my word. And what's more, not only was the energy between the two of them different, it was very positive, but my client felt calm around her mother for the first time in years. Oh, and she no longer had digestion issues. No, gee, <laughs> this is problems. crazy. <laughs> oh, gee, this is so crazy. The stomach problems had cleared up as well. Oh, my. And I heard from the client several months later saying that she was still on good terms, even better terms with mom. And there oh. was still no stomach issues for the client my dear i want you to know that when whenever i have heard from quite a you're in fact i hear from people not not infrequently who have gone to see or consulted people that they hear as guests on seek reality and by far you're the person I hear about most often oh. and in every single one of those cases they thank me that they have found you every single one of them and I they, all the cases are different they never it's never the same kind of thing but every single one of them raves about you I don't and they're all different I don't understand how so many different kinds of problems can be solved by you. I, it's so, it's, it's in the beginning, it was like, wow, what interesting coincidences, especially since in the very beginning, 
I thought it was weird beyond weird that you were talking about doing all of this with your imagination. I'm sorry. I'm a skeptic by nature. I know what an imagination is. Mm -hmm. I didn't get for the longest time that your imagination was something you could use to solve real problems. I didn't get it. I'm sorry. I really didn't get it. Yeah. And it is really only now that I believe that what you're talking about is real. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't get it. So, so, but I get it now. I'm, I, I have to tell you, my dear beloved friend, I get it now. So will you please tell other people who are where I was a couple of years ago, because I get it now. What are you talking about? I know it's real. Explain. So me, thank you. Let me then explain from my perspective. Um, okay. As I mentioned, your soul speaks through your, ima uh, your, through your imagination. I okay. Find I get it. And, and please, everybody, listen to what he's saying because it's true. I can tell you now that it's true. I didn't get it either before. 60% of my clients are visual. So we go into a past life or um, back into something that happened in this life. And those clients see it all in their imagination. It's like they're starring in their own motion picture costume drama. Terrific. But about 40% of my clients, and I'm in this group myself, are more auditory or sensing or feeling. So whenever I go into one of my past lives or meet with my higher self or spirit guides or archangels or whatever, I don't see anything. <laughs> I feel it. I sense it. I know what's happening, but I don't see it. So it's very easy for my ego mind to say, oh, Peter, you're making up. <laughs> right. right? Okay. I agree. Oh, I'm making up this story, not that one over there. I'm mean, from somewhere. So I invite you in the trans state to share your story with me as it unfolds, because right up front, we're going to take you up. We're taking you into a relaxative trance, up into the light, up into the fifth dimension, where all possibilities exist for you. All answers are there. We're introducing to your heart, your higher self, and other guidance that joins us often, um, always it does. You're channeling that guidance. They're coming through to tell us exactly where we need to go to resolve these issues. So I'm facilitating. I'm not healing. I don't have that ability but I'm facilitating your channeling of this inner wisdom, this guidance from um, the non-physical realm that wants you to heal and knows where to, you, to, where, where to take you <laughs> to help you resolve these issues. This life or a past life. <laughs> so, okay, I, I believe you. Uh, you are right, Peter. And I maybe that's why that's your name. I don't know if that's why that's your name. It's taken me 10 years to be able to say these words, and I never would have said them until about two years ago. But Peter Wright, you are absolutely right. You are able to do these things, and you do them truly. I get it. I do get it now. Well, we, What we you do is going to be part of what we are about to do, Craig and I together. Thank you so much for what you do. You are a gift to the world. We work in partnership with your own guidance. Uh, they lead us. We both get out of the way because we're being inspired through them, through first thought, first feeling, first image, first voice. Yep. And I'm, I'm personally amazed at what can happen in one two-hour session. Typically, I will see a client once. One two-hour session. Not that, we were, not that we resolve everything. No, we don't do that. But <laughs> what I offer is we work with your heart, your higher self, and other members of your inner wisdom team. Could be Archangel Michael, could be spirit guides, could be Kuan Yin, could be your grandmother. Could They show up to help us. And we can accomplish a lot. I then invite you to imagine yourself in a sacred spot a special place in your imagination that you can go to and reconnect with this inner wisdom team that we formed. It could be at the beach, at the top of the mountain, in your backyard, but to go there and describe that place to me. 
oh, I'm sitting in a meadow and a uh, beautiful spring day. The mountains are to my left, the oceans to my right. Great. So as you sit there in your special spot right now, let's invite your heart to join us. How does your heart make itself known to you? Um, oh, it's a red heart right out in front of me. If in fact you're visual, maybe, or you may sense or feel the heart. So we establish the heart. We've been working with it for the last hour and 15 minutes. So now you have a good sense of what it looks like, but we, you've invited it to join you in your sanctuary. Let's invite your higher self to join us. Again, you've, we work with it. How do you experience it? Archangel Michael, where is he? Um, he's standing to my right. Your grandmother, where is she? She's over there to the left. So we place these uh, resources who've helped us during the session who you would like to have part of your inner wisdom team around you in your sanctuary. And then I bring the session to a close. I then send you a recording of my higher self shortcut. My voice hypnotic music takes you into trance up into the light. And when you're in trance up in the light, I invite you to be in your sanctuary with your inner wisdom team, heart, higher self and the others. And to welcome them, feel the love and support they have for you and then um, ask them a question through your heart about your day and shut up. <laughs> yes, that's the hardest part. And get from them first thought, first feeling, first image, first voice, an answer about your day. So you can begin to work with them in the future. It takes practice, but by practicing, you can get to know them better. And I give you a number of handouts to help you do that. So you can continue on with your own um, navigating your your soul's journey with their help because they've helped you so far and are eager for you to, to thrive in this lifetime. Comments, questions, ask me. I, I, I have since listened to um, a recording of the session in which Thomas told me I was not allowed to listen to any of uh, I was not allowed to be, to be regressed by you to any of the lifetimes I lived with him other, you know, at all of any of the 17 lifetimes I've lived with him. I wasn't in his Jefferson lifetime, except as part of the guidance of, um, I've forgotten the name of his name now. I think I'm not supposed to remember it. Um, someone who was in his lifetime when he was old, I helped him to work on um, the effort he wrote, he made to try to write Liberating Jesus. He made it and it exists, I think, at uh, Monticello. Um, his problem was that he did live uh, as a very, a very successful, not successful enough in his mind, lifetime as Thomas Jefferson. Mm -hmm. And he let me know that that was a mistake on his part. And I got all hung up on that. Mm. And so then, um, he and I headed out in your office, and um, he had to he had to take me down from the hero worship. And I listened to that, and it was one of the most emotional things I've ever been through in my life to listen to it again. Yes. And and he straightened me out pretty completely. And that and I that's why I don't want to play that before we started this um, this this session today of talking. Sam said he wanted to play it, and I don't want to play it ever for anyone in public. Um, but no, he told me very, very directly why he didn't ever want it played for anyone else. He told me what a, you know, what a humble person he really is. And it was good that I listened to it again, but I probably will never, ever listen to it again. He told me I'm the only, the only way he can do his work now, and I need to straighten out and fly right, and I will from now on. Yes, but Peter, you are um, you are the real deal, and I'm very grateful that you're letting me help you do this work, do your work, and and you're helping me do mine, and we're going to do this work together. And um, I'm hoping that you will be part of Seek Reality Online as we bring it to the world this year. We have a lot of work to do together because we have a lot of erroneous work to counteract now in the world. Many people believe that believe wrong things about um, death and what comes after it, which we have to counteract 
And we have the glorious truth to bring to the world, which now it's finally time to do, um, Thomas and others are telling us. So we're very mm -hmm. excited about that. And I'm just very grateful that, that you're there. And so I just want to say that. Thank you so much for doing the work that you do. And, and so what I'd like to quickly say is that I offer free consultations to potential clients who would like to learn more about what I do um, by Zoom or phone or Skype, because I also work with all my clients by Zoom, phone or Skype. And therefore, um, you can go onto my website and um, uh, email me and we can set up a time to, to, to meet where you can talk about the issues you'd like to resolve. And I can talk a little bit more about not only the past life work that I do, but also uh, working about issues in this life and other areas of my practice that perhaps can be of interest to helping you uh, come to closure with um, issues that you're seeking to resolve in your life, or if you're stuck or whatever that might be. Peter's website is insightsfromwithin.com. Um, and basically, <laughs> he seems many more things than you think. Um, are actually issues caused by past lives or future lives. Um, it, it turns out there is no time except in this very limited material reality, which even scientists know occupies less than 5% of what they know exists. Nearly all of reality is what we know of as the astral plane. Um, all near-death experiences that don't happen, like right in the doctor's office and stuff, um, happen in the astral plane. They don't go anywhere near where the dead actually are. Um, although it's hard to even say that, Peter, because um, everybody that you encounter in the astral plane is actually kind of deadish, right? Because they're not they're they're either traveling astrally or you know out of the body or they have been living on earth one time or another. It's kind of all mixed up together. But people who are recently dead have been dead, you know, at one point or another, relatively recently. Uh, those people um, could be in the astral plane. But if they're people who were dead in, you know, your lifetime, you're, you're someone who have, are in the process of of, of traveling out of the body as part of a near-death experience, you, you, you can't go to where they are right now as part of your NDE. It just, you can't get there because right. it's a one-way trip. Right. So um, all the people who think that they died and came back to life, they didn't. It's a one-way trip. And that has polluted us unbelievably. Um, I talked about that last week. If you didn't hear it, you really ought to hear it. It's actually a very important uh, seek reality episode. Um, we're going to be talking about that a great deal more. And I talked about why um, last week, and we'll be talking about that a great deal more, uh, partly because it's starting to harm people that I know and love. And I, I, I can't allow that to happen. Um, we're coming near the end of our time. Peter, what do you want people most to know? Are there some things I'm at the point now where I'm so enraptured with what you have been able to do and what I've seen you be able to do for friends of mine. I literally heard from a very, very dear friend that I have never met. I have maybe many dear friends now that I've never met that I've accept um, through emails. They live all over the world. And I heard from one who was giving me a list of the people that he um, he's had, has met and loved, who had just just because they're they they have been contributors to his life through Seek Reality, and you're kind of at the top of the list, and and I'm so grateful to you for the thing what, what you've done, the things you've done for all these people. Is there any kind of thing you can't help? Um, I, it, maybe that's a shorter list than the kinds of things you can help. Well, I think. Um... The healing or the, 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 the resolution of these issues is in a way up to the client uh, because you're in charge of yourself. And if you're there sitting during the session saying, um, I'm not going to be hypnotized, I'm not going to be hypnotized, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but I was saying I'm not going to be, and then I woke up later. <laughs> and um, but, but all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. So I invite you to get out of the way and just relax, oh. relax, relax. Okay. And it could right, be that you're, you're not ready to resolve the issue. And that's okay, too. You know, you have other 
uh, things to do in your life first before that issue can be resolved. So that's why I turn to your higher self and all your guidance in partnership with you during the session, asking them what wants to happen next for um, Alice's highest good. And they'll tell us, they'll take us there because they oh know- Oh my goodness, do they ever? Oh, that's so true. So I'm facilitating, but I'm not in charge. I'm rather serving um, as a channel, if you were, I, and, and also the client serving is a channel, allowing spirit, however you, des you know, describe that, source the divine to work through us on behalf of your highest good. That's a beautiful summary. And that certainly was true in Thomas's case, because you really, you, what you did was basically let him take over that whole session. And I got to listen to the, to the whole thing very closely. And uh, I understood myself much better after that than I ever have before. And I'm very grateful. You, you did a beautiful job. So that was wonderful. Oh my goodness. I wish I could hug you. Consider yourself hugged across the whole country. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, my dear, so much. Everyone. Again, we have come to the end of our time. This has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. I'm so happy you were with us today. This has been very special to me. Please never forget that you are a powerful, eternal being. You never began and you never will end. And when you really get what that means, it's going to change everything in your life for the better. Our guest next week will be one of the most fascinating people I know, or really the most fascinating people anybody knows. Sonia Rinaldi will be joining us directly from Brazil. She's the leading electronic transcommunication specialist in the world. And I've wanted to have her as a guest on Seek Reality forever. She speaks perfect English, but the specialists working with her have of late been, for the most part, sending her pictures of dead loved ones, not, not verbal communication. And anyway, I wasn't sure how to make electronic communications work on Seek Reality so, so, so you'd be able to understand it. But after Craig Hogan did it the last time he was here, and now we'll be starting to do it in April with Seek Reality Online, I thought, you know, what the heck? We'll try it. So next week, you're going to meet, meet a real sweetheart of a wonderful human being who will be part of our Seek Reality Online family. Sonia Rinaldi, please, my dear ones, don't miss this. And this week, our guest has been a big Seek Reality favorite, Peter Wright, who has been with us for the 11th time. Peter is a registered hypnotherapist and Actually, a past life regression hypnotherapist, one of the few Seek Reality guests I have myself consulted on several occasions. He has helped me a great deal. If it were not for my fastidious primary spirit guide, my beautiful and sainted Thomas, who insists on entirely ruling my life, I think Peter might have done more for me. But that's a topic for another. Actually, it's not a topic for another day. I think it's more a topic for another lifetime. But Peter Wright is a wonderful, beautiful, extraordinary man who has taught me so much. His website is insightsfromwithin.com. Here's something of a of a past sort of sort of note, let's say. Of course, we record our Seek Reality episodes three weeks ahead in order to spare my sanity. When we were doing it closer to the time, occasionally we, we had to skip one and I and I just couldn't do that. So it's just been announced that our beloved Betty White's last word was Alan. That was the name of her husband. He had predeceased her by decades. Then she fell asleep and she passed over. She saw her husband. That was the last thing she said was, her, was his name. Just as John Adams, who was briefly coherent just before he died on July 4th, 1826, said, Thomas Jefferson still survives. He saw Thomas Jefferson just before he passed over. And just as Steve Jobs, in the hours before his death, looked up from saying goodbye to his living family and said, oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow. And then he stopped communicating with his living family because he had seen the people who were coming for him. Everyone who dies a normal planned death, and that's more than 75% of us, according to Mikey, 75% of the population is going to be met at the deathbed by beloved loved ones who have gone on before. 
So you, as you begin to die, be watching for those you love who went home long before you. That's how much we're all loved. That's the beautiful thought I want to leave you with this week. Now, as you know, my own nonfiction books are Liberating Jesus, My Thomas, The Fun of Dying, The Fun of Staying in Touch, The Fun of Growing Forever, The Fun of Living Together, and soon The Fun of Loving Jesus, Embracing the Christianity that Jesus Taught. And of course, children have the fun of beating Jesus. And you can order all these books through bookstores or on Amazon.com. And the adult books are available as audiobooks. If you want to talk about anything at all with me, you can always contact me through the green contact block on RobertaGrimes.com. It can take a few days. I apologize for that, but I, I get a lot of emails now. Past episodes of Seek Reality are always available on webtalkradio.net. They're available three weeks later. Three weeks, take, go ahead, three weeks from when we record these, subtract or add a day or something. And then that's where they, when they start going out to just about everywhere that you can find um, a blog, uh, um, podcast episodes, you can find our, our podcast. If, if you enjoy these weekly conversations, of course, you, you really ought to just come. Every, every Sunday, we put out a, a new blog um, uh, at, as well. I'm sorry, I'm kind of feeling emotional right now. There are so many people that I wish I could hug individually today. I'm feeling that everybody, everybody who is part of our family in one way or another is someone I really separately individually love and care about. I wish that I was able to help all of you stop being afraid of death because each of you is so individually loved. Just think about that. When, when, when Betty was ready to go, her husband was there waiting for her. When each of us is ready to go, there'll be somebody there waiting for us. None of us, none of us needs to die alone. We are all so desperately, perfectly loved. And with that thought, I want to leave you today. This has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Please enjoy. Please make the most of this coming week in our one reality, knowing that you are a powerful, eternal being, and you, most of all in the universe, are infinitely loved. You've been listening to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Roberta blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Join us every week as we explore what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about the one reality we all share. Knowing the truth changes everything.